Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Miami Total Football. We're at Drive Pink Stadium where just a few hours ago, Inter Miami ended its losing streak, but it did not end its winless run. Inter Miami picked up a point at home with a one-to-one -one draw against the Philadelphia Union. And the result was a pretty bittersweet one for Inter Miami because it played much better than it did in the Wednesday defeat to the New England Revolution, the Miami Massacre on Commercial Boulevard, but it still only got one point out of it because Inter Miami gave up a late goal, an 85th minute equalizer to Kasper Strabilko, and that canceled out Robbie Robinson's earlier finish in the second half and left Inter Miami frustrated that it couldn't get the reward it's looking for. It hurts, it hurts Franco, uh, you know, when you're so close. You're so close and you, and you get to that point where you think, you know, is this the turning point? Is this the one we're going to get three points? It's a great springboard for us and it just felt as if it was uh, ripped away from us. Now we'll touch on the performance in just a little bit, but let's start by talking on one of the bigger talking points from this one. And that was that Gregory was the captain. He was wearing the captain's armband. Now, if you remember and you go back to the beginning of the season, head coach Phil Neville had designated four players to be captains a bit of an unorthodox approach but that's the approach that Phil Neville went with to start the year and he had named Gonzalo Higuain, Blaise Matuidi, Leandro Gonzalez Pires and Victor Ulloa the captains and they rotated the armband on a game to game basis but in this one Gregory was wearing the armband and Phil Neville revealed after the game that that will be the case going forward because Gregory has been given the captaincy for the foreseeable future for the rest of this season and quite possibly beyond. I take responsibility in terms of the four captaincy model. I told the players the other day I don't think it was working. I think it created a little bit of uncertainty in terms of who was leading uh, and and I said that Gregory now will be the captain. I thought he captained the side fantastic tonight uh, and, and that's that's me that taking responsibility for the decisions I made at the start of the season and it's no slant on the players that we've uh, we had but I just feel as if uh, with the qualities that Gregory's got now uh, I think he's a perfect captain for the next uh, three, four, five years at this football club. He thinks Gregory exemplifies everything that he likes in a captain and in a player on and off the field. And Gregory was more than happy to take on that responsibility. For me, it's very important. This decision of the professor is a responsibility more in the group. So, as we have great players here, and he's depositing this confidence in me, I'm very grateful. And I like this responsibility. E espero retribuir essa, esse, esse, essa confiança que ele está que ele dando por mim e como bastante luta, bastante entrega para ajudar o Inter Miami a fazer uma grande temporada. Now for me, if you ask me, I think Gregory was the best performer for Inter at Miami. In this one, you could certainly nitpick his performance there towards the end and say he let uh, Quinn get in there on that 85th minute play that led to the equalizer. He should have maybe tracked back a little bit better instead of watching the man. But besides that, Gregory didn't set a foot wrong. And obviously that's, that is a big mistake, especially in the 85th minute. But again, Gregory throughout the course of the rest of the 90 minutes was for me Inter Miami's best player because he was a machine, a Brazilian machine, broke things up uh, on, at the back, helped move the ball quickly and accurately, was a presence in the midfield, made himself, made his presence felt and he left his stamp on the games. For me, he has become Inter Miami's best player to date, better than Lewis Morgan, better than anyone else you could name on the roster. I think Gregory right now has shown he's a cut above everyone else and certainly is having the best season out of this group of players. But there's still a lot of season to go, so we'll see how he does. But his first game as captain was a pretty, pretty good one, all things considered. Gregory is an extension of me extension of me on the field, the way that I want our football team to play, the, he's an extension of the values that I want this football club to have, his passion, his quality, his never to die attitude, the way he speaks to people, his commitment to wanting everybody to do well. I think, I think that's what Gregory brings to this football club and from day one he's, he's been outstanding and, and he's not played I don't think for oh, 22 days maybe, maybe a bit longer. Uh, but, but he was outstanding tonight. Now another player that had a decent game was Robbie 
Robinson. Not only did Robinson score the goal that gave Inter Miami its first goal in the three games, but it was his second of the season and first since week one and first since he suffered those repeated hamstring injuries. So for Robbie Robinson, the goal was very refreshing and rewarding, but it was not just the goal that made him stand out. The speed and the aggressiveness he showed there on the left wing was a big boost for Inter Miami for the second straight game. If there's one room for improvement for Robbie Robinson or one glaring room for improvement, it's that he doesn't use his left all that much. Now, if you're going to play on the left wing, you can cut in on your right and take shots and the like, but if you're going to whip in crosses or if you're going to be a little bit more unpredictable for the defense, you have to be able to use that left foot at least somewhat. Robbie Robinson rarely uses it, very rarely. It, it's pretty noticeable uh, when, when you see him running out there. So that's something he's going to have to work on and the coaching staff's going to have to work on with him. But again, by and large, this was another step in the right direction for a player that had been dealing with a lot of pesky injuries or a pesky hamstring injury for the course of this season. Yeah, I mean, it's felt great, honestly. Um, it's even better that I'm able to come off the field healthy. You know, I think that's so important. Um, just my rehab, doing everything right. You know, it's been a long journey to get to this. It's felt like it hasn't been that. I was away for maybe a couple months, but yeah, I mean, I'm happy to be back, happy to be um, contributing to the team. Now, all in all for Inter Miami, to repeat what I said earlier, this was a much better performance, miles better, because they didn't get blown out. They competed better. They showed more effort, more fight across the board. Even Gonzalo Higuain on a couple of occasions made some darting runs backwards that try to help win the ball back or put pressure on Philadelphia Union players, and that's something we have not seen a whole lot from him. The team functioned better. It built up from back to front and started started to piece together some nice attacking sequences. This was far and away better than what we've seen in a lot of the recent weeks where Inter Miami has mostly mostly played long balls to, to the middle of the park and try to win second balls and try to generate play from there. This was much better in that regard in terms of building out of the back and trying to create passing sequences that lead to chances. But again, for me, Inter Miami still lacks quality and composure in the final third and not sure how they're going to go about improving on that. Maybe this game with the goal, even though it ended on a bitter note, it's a tie that maybe feels like a little bit like a loss because of how it transpired, how it unfolded at the end of the game, whereas the Philadelphia Union might feel like it's a tie that feels like a win because of how they got the result. But once Inter Miami has a night to cool off or a night to remove itself from the game, Maybe they pick up some confidence from this one because they did play better and they were much more competitive. But again, that final third is still lacking some quality. Again, the confidence can help. As you saw, once Inter Miami scored, they had another play shortly thereafter that maybe could have put the game away. But Robbie Robinson pulled his shot just wide of the near post, the left-hand post. So maybe this helps Inter Miami's confidence and maybe that does a world of good. But again, from a soccer standpoint, I still think there's things that need to be improved, maybe have a little more attacking volume, maybe have more options, throw numbers forward a little bit more. But again, a step in the right direction for Inter Miami, especially after Wednesday's horrid display. It's a long road ahead of us for this football club to uh, to build momentum, to build the foundation. Uh, tonight was a, was a little baby step forward and uh, we know we've got a lot to go. But that about does it for now. What did you think of Inter Miami's 1-1 one -one draw with the Philadelphia Union? Are you happy that the losing streak is at an end? Or are you still upset that this winless run continues and that they haven't won a home game here at Dry Pink Stadium yet in 2021? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, what do you think of Phil Neville naming Gregory as the full-time captain for Inter Miami? Do you agree? with that decision or do you think someone else on the team should be the captain again let me know in the comment section below and also let me know what you thought about Robbie Robinson and the team's performance in general we'll be back again this week to preview the next game for Inter Miami which is again at home against CF Montreal a familiar opponent for Inter Miami this will be the third time they play each other so stay tuned to Miami Total Football for more news and analysis of the team in the lead up to that game. I am Franco Panizo, and we'll talk to you guys again very, very soon.